Hello everyone, this is just going to be a kind of a basic how to get started in Last Day on Earth video. Um, there's nothing fancy in this video. I'm, I'm, it's been seven months since I first started playing. I'm really just doing this for someone I know that's asking me about how to get started in this game. So uh, I'm sure there are better videos out there that are a little more in-depth and, and uh, much better made than what I'm about to show you. But uh, basically what happens when you start the game is you end up here. Uh, though it won't look anything like this, you're at your home base and it's going to basically be a, a big uh, square of land like this that's going to be populated with, I believe, some zombies, uh, some real basic ones, and uh, there'll be some wood and some stone and, and, and there'll be this old truck down here. And it'll mostly just be empty, and this is just kind of where this is where you're going to end up building your base. So you can go ahead and clear all the land of everything, or if, if you want, you can actually leave a couple items, a couple of trees and rocks uh, for later, if you'd like, and you can just keep them there. I, occasionally, I see bases that have those on there, although I was, they always look kind of weird to me, but um, like they're hack bases or something. I don't know. Uh, so you, the first thing you can do is clear this area, and you can that, you can use those basics to just get started. Um, what what you uh, want to build is a backpack. This guy right here is a military backpack, and you can't get that till later. But you can build the basic backpack, um, which is right here. And that's pretty easy. You need you always need to carry around a lot of stuff. So start by building yourself a backpack. Uh, try to get a weapon. Um, you know the spear is pretty easy. Get in bed. We'll get it. Okay. So um, there's a couple other weapons you can build, but. Most all the weapons that you're going to play with in the game are going to be weapons that you'll find. I mean, I definitely build a craft a lot of melee weapons, um, like the Skull Crushers. I, I craft a lot of those. And I've, I've crafted other weapons over the months I've played, but for, for, for the most part, most of the weapons that you're going to get, you're going to craft. And uh, I'll go back to the base and show some more stuff, but... I'll just kind of show the world map right now. So once you get done with your um, clearing your base and and getting a few basic items, then you then you need to start venturing around the map in order to get more stuff to uh, go back and continue building your base up. And <clears throat> so there's for when you start off, there's basically two two uh, areas to go to. There's wood zones which there's the green, the yellow or orange zone, and the red zone for, for wood. And then for the stone, there's the same thing over on this side, green, uh, yellow, and, and a red zone. There's, there's also a couple other, uh, a green one here and another green one here, and I never understood what the purpose of those were. They don't seem any different, but some, you know, if, as you're moving around the map, you might find yourself wanting to go there for whatever reason. Um, so the, the, the main resource of these two zones is wood over here in the, in the uh, pine bushes. And you'll get stone and iron in the limestone ridge. Those are the main resources. But while you're there, there are other things to, to get, like plant fibers and berries, um, the plant fibers you can use to make bandages, and the berries you can just kind of get for food and, and water basically by, by eating those. And uh, the zombies you kill will have rope on them and, and other things. So you, you can get a lot of the basics just by going back and forth between the uh, pine bushes here and limestone ridge. So you'll have to kind of do a bunch of grinding back and forth to start building up the basics. But it's, it's relatively easy, it doesn't take that long. And then uh, as you progress, you can start going to the, the um, yellow-orange zones, whatever, and ultimately to the red zones. 
There isn't much different, uh, much of a difference between what you get from these zones. There's more wood basically. And in the, in the center of each zone, like in the, in the green zones, there's chests and there's like two or three chests in the middle of the green zone and there's like three or four chests in the middle of, of uh, I guess I'll just call them orange zones. And the red zones here, there's usually around five chests and each ch the chests are much better as you get to the, like the red zones. Sometimes you can get shotguns or clocks, rifles and stuff. Um, I'd say one out of every ten chests you'll usually find a weapon. Uh, duct tape, like in the red zone you might get you might get like five duct tapes in one chest and you might get only one duct tape in a, in a green zone so the loot inside the chests are, are better and there are more chests so that's kind of the main reward for going to harder places but you'll also encounter much, much more difficult uh, zombies um, as you move through the red zones plus in addition there's also AI other survivors that are controlled by the computer that will try to kill you in these zones and the, the ones in the red zone can kill you very very quickly if you're not paying attention and aren't well prepared for it so you have to really watch out um, in the red zones but for the most part when you're starting out you just want to go, kind of go back and forth to the green zones so in, a different, in addition to the zones the other main thing is there are events and the uh, the three events that you should be starting out with and like I said it's been forever since I started but uh, there's the most important one is the crashed airplane. So if you see a crashed airplane, that is the main one you want to go to. It's very easy. There's uh, just a few zombies there, basic ones, and a lot of loot that's very good to start off with. My understanding is that once you hit level 50, though, that thing stops spawning. So I think once a day you'll get that that uh, you'll get that uh, airplane crash, and you want to go there definitely and start stocking up on all that stuff. It's got a lot of good good loot to start off with. There's also airdrops, and those uh, you always want to go to if you can if you can make it. There's usually one or two toxic spitters you have to kill, but otherwise you can just kind of make your way to the middle, and there'll be a, a box that you can open up. You know, try not to attack anybody there, just make it to the box, kill a couple sp spitters if there are any. Sometimes you don't have any and open up that box and you'll, there's always a weapon there that's usually two-thirds strength and a few other good supplies that are great for starting off and then the third event is the dealer and the dealer is uh, c kind of a pain you got to go there find out what he wants and then go back but you usually get a pretty solid weapon a, a gun often if not a stronger melee weapon in, in exchange for giving him whatever he needs so you might not have what he needs the event uh, the, the basic events that you get there's also seasonal events and just random events that the, the game will put in like currently there's an oak event that appears right in the middle of my map right here and there'll be a little oak grove and that's a little advanced for people starting out but you can go there and and uh if you have a, a upgraded pickaxe, I'm sorry, upgraded um, uh, an upgraded um, hatchet, the iron hatchet, you can chop down oak, and oak is very useful uh, later on in the game. So uh, that can all that place can also be very dangerous. So watch out because there are survivors there that are very very strong. So in addition to the events, um, there are three bases that you start off with that will have different names. These are not real bases, they're AI bases. When nobody's there, you can go there, you can break down the walls and get some pretty good loot starting off in the game. So you definitely want to go visit these three bases. Um, I have Frenzy and Goblin and uh, Master. Those were my three bases. And they have a lot of loot there that you can get early on. And uh, that will help you out uh, big time. Once you take the loot, those bases just sit there on the map and they don't do anything. So go ahead and take what you want from there. You, you can store stuff in there, although I've heard that's not always the safest thing to do now, but um, you might someday want to store something in there while you're like raiding back and forth at, at uh, some zone over here or something. But anyways, 
So once you've, once you've taken everything from there, the only other thing to really do, there is, I'm sorry, there's this infected forest here and don't ever go here. Uh, the, the big one, who is a big zombie guy that uh, is very, very, very difficult to kill. Uh, pretty much impossible to kill when you're starting out. But he's there. He comes and charges you right away. There's, don't even bother going there. All, he's, all that's going to happen, he's going to charge you and he's going to uh, make you leave or you're going to die really quick. So don't even bother going there. And then there is this bunker. So this bunker is super critical in the game. This is Bunker Alpha. And I'll talk to you about that in a little bit, but that's pretty much all there is to do. This is Bunker Bavo, and there ain't anything to do there, except you can go there and loot it. Uh, I believe there's a whole bunch of zombies, though, you have to kill, so you have to have a gun, as I recall, to just kind of survive that, um, at least to survive it with some ease. Uh, up here in the north, all this stuff won't be accessible until you have a chopper. A chopper isn't something you need to worry about right away and uh, this stuff you can't get to, and this, this bunker down here you can't get to at all yet. So uh, it's pretty much this lower area is all you gotta worry about for quite a while. I mean, uh, the chopper took me forever to get, and you know, that's like a whole, whole another video right there. But uh, So as far as what else you have on your screen here, there's your energy uh, on the top left coins which is if you're buying stuff you know if you're buying coins in the game which i pretty much don't ever do and there's fuel if you don't have a chopper you're not going to have a fuel gauge but you will have energy and energy is what you need to get around in this game this game requires you to uh expend energy to get anywhere and so it, it basically i don't know how necessary it was for them to the developers to add this in here but if if you want to go here, it's going to take 15 energy to run, or you can walk, in which case you have to kill some time. So uh, there's always like, uh, you're, you're, you know, you get low on energy, and then you got to decide if you want to walk somewhere. And usually when you get low on energy, that's when the events pop up that you can't get to unless you spend money on coins. It's kind of, that's, they, they kind of do that to get you to want to spend money on the game. But if you, you're careful and you, and you, time your game correctly you can usually do a lot of stuff uh and you can just walk to certain locations and you know go take care of some errand and then come back to the game later and you're you're there um and uh if, if, if some event does come up and you hit run oh i did not mean to do that i don't know why i clicked that if you if you run somewhere and you don't have enough energy let me see if i can do this again here Okay, so this is 24 energy and I have 17. If you click on this, you'll get watch ad. So like I think once a day you get about five ads or so that you can watch that will gain you energy and you really want to save those for when some event pops up that you can't get up to. Like I said, those, these events tend to pop up when you're low on energy. That way they encourage you to spend more coins and spend more money. So save these ads for when an, uh, an airdrop or something comes up that you couldn't get to otherwise. Um, for me, I, I've got my chopper, so if something comes up and I need to get there, I can always just spend the fuel. So I don't usually have too much trouble getting where I need to go with the energy, but I still am very conservative with my energy and walk when I can and, and uh, try to save as much of my energy as I can. Um, so back to my base now that I just wasted all that energy. So um, on the bottom of your screen here, there's this clans button. There's currently not clans in the game. That's the multiplayer they're trying to integrate. That's going to be coming pretty soon, according to them. I don't really know how true that is because even though I keep hearing about it and they supposedly just released it, uh, some footage of them testing it out, this game can be laggy at times just with you playing it. So how they're, how they're going to make that happen with three or 30 people at the same time, I don't know. Um, but that's supposedly something that's going to come, in which case this game is just going to be popular. Very, very popular. Um, uh, this zombie truck thing next to it, this house, and that's something they're supposed to add later, and who knows. And this thing is like ambushing. That's another thing that who knows if it'll ever be in the game. Some of the stuff that they 
they have in the game later on they change their mind take it out or change it some way so who knows when those buttons will ever work uh, the, the stack of coins here this is where if you want to spend money you can spend money down in the bottom left corner it says inbox and this is where every day you'll get three bottles of water and three cans of beans so every day come into the inbox take your water take your beans especially when you start off water is kind of hard to get and you can end up dying of thirst quite often uh, the good thing is if you do die you come back with full uh, thirst and hunger and stuff all back to 100 so uh, at least there's that if you do get anything in here uh, try to save it for instance armor and, and weapons are good to have when you're in a bind it's kind of like storing it in a backpack you can never put it back in the inbox but at least it's there super desperate I got some Well, at least I could always come back here and grab that weapon or the armor or whatever to, to help me get that loot. So this next button here on the bottom right corner, uh, one away, this is where you build stuff. And, um, you know, starting off with the basic stuff, you have to spend points. I, I believe that there's enough points to build everything here, except you're one point short. Um, I, I had reset it recently, so you're probably wondering why I don't have so much of this stuff. It's because I hit I hit the reset on it, and uh, I'm just kind of saving most, most of my points for when I need them for something. Uh, a lot of these things you won't be able to build because things like the tungsten bar are not in the game, ash plank's not in the game, so... And by the time they do release the dragon ob, it, it probably will have some different recipe, or they'll just eliminate it all together, who knows. Um, yeah, a lot of these things you, you can't even build. You basically can't build any guns except a zip gun, and that thing is ridiculous. So don't even worry about building guns. You will find guns. Um, you will build melee weapons, melee weapons as you need them. But you'll find a ton of those too. It's, it's mostly these other things that you'll be building, like hatchets, pickaxes, uh, the small boxes, the melting furnace. All, all these things for your base are, is the main thing that you'll be building. Everything else you don't really need to worry about. Um, and then the backpack here. So this is uh, this is your inventory. Uh, you, you get the top left side here is what you normally can carry. Once you have a basic backpack, and then when you have a military backpack, you get the next five spots, and there will be another backpack, even bigger, from five more spots. So the more inventory you can carry, the better. Um, on the top, you can hit this button um, to name yourself. It's it's this button that's next to my name up here. So you can name yourself, and you can pick your gender. They just released the girl, so I'm kind of playing with her uh, just for the hell of it. But you can pick you know all the different stuff to customize. You can rename yourself. Uh, if you do change the gender, it, it does log you out, and you have to come back in. Uh, and then you got your armor over here, pretty basic, your weapon. Uh, when this weapon gets degraded down to nothing, and you, if you have another weapon down here where I have this, it will quickly swap over. But almost always you want to make sure you have something to heal with on the ready. Uh, so I would be, I always caution against having two weapons ready here and nothing to heal like especially when you're playing the harder zones like you really need to be able to heal quickly if somebody just like, runs out and starts shooting at you you, you could die really quickly so uh, generally speaking you want to have a weapon up here and something to heal with and then this button here is to, uh, for trashing things down at the bottom in the middle uh, the armor that you wear there's an armor total on the bottom that's it says 24 now it says 20 so the speed for the boots and the armor and then the weapons <clears throat> do a certain amount of damage and they have an attack speed what they don't list here is they also do a range so this this one has a pretty big range you can hit things from pretty far away and that does matter quite a bit um, when you when you're attacking somebody I, I'm not going to demonstrate it here, but usually the best way to attack somebody with a weapon is to hit them and take a step back and hit again. That forces the enemy to kind of stop 
after attack, walk forward and try to hit you again. So that's the best way to conserve your weapons and armor. So you, you kind of, you kind of like you just swing and then step back and swing and then step back and swing. You know, I, I can't do it without an actual opponent here. But that, that's kind of how that works. So uh, in order to go to, to Bunker Alpha, you need to have a... Um, I don't even know where the hell I put this on. You need to have your um, a card to get in. So you go to the bunker, there's some zombies to kill, and then you need to find one of these A cards. All the rest of these cards are useless. Go ahead and collect at least one of each for future use, but you need to get an A card and then you need to have a code to go to, to get into the bunker. And um, once you're high enough level, you can build a radio, and you can tune over to this part here, and that's the code. So you're going to have to get the radio, and you're going to have to find the card. The card, I don't know if it's in green zones or what, but you basically need to loot uh, zones. So, and it, so up here, I, I forgot to mention, but there's hunger, and there's uh, th the thirst below your name. And so you have to eat food and, and drink liquids. Eating food will also restore some of your your uh, your thirst. Uh, there's two other things. There is kind of a smell meter that you don't see, and there's uh, I guess a hydration meter. Like you you drink too much or whatever, you, uh, at a certain point you have to pee. And while you're peeing, you can't do anything. So you can be in the middle of combat and suddenly have to pee. So you got to watch out for that. Um, you will get like a thing over your head right now. It says I'm hungry. Sometimes it says you're thirsty. So you need to constantly be checking that. It's just kind of something you have to maintain while you play. Um, if you get s stinky, then when you go onto a zone, uh, the monsters will come attack you, and you, and from a distance, you can't sneak up on them. So it's pretty important that you build a shower as soon as you can. You can get the stink off you. Um, even if you don't get spit on by the toxic spitters, you still accumulate stink just walking around and doing stuff. So eventually, you're going to have to take a shower. And... Uh, the rain catcher here is for kind of refilling your water. I mean, I find water all the time, but that's a good thing to build. And, uh, I mean, as, as far as combat, I'm not going to show you, but when, when, you, when, when you do see toxic spitters and you start fighting them, they kind of shoot a cone out at you. And what you do when you see one of them is you run up and go to the side and swipe at them and then they'll turn and spit at you and you run to the other side. I mean, that's, most of the rest of the combat's not that hard. It's, it's mostly just going slow, trying to take one enemy on at a time. Um, you cannot sneak with guns. Uh, if you do sneak with a, a melee weapon, uh, I, mean, I mean, you can sneak with guns, but you can't get the, the big perk. So if you have a melee weapon and you, I guess, you know what, I guess I'm gonna go to a zone and just show show some some combat. So this is some basic combat. Um, I'm taking my chopper, but you'll just have to run or walk over to these places. So, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go to a uh, orange zone. Run, yeah, I mean, drive. Okay, so I'm going to drive over here and just kind of show some basic combat. I have a bunch of better melee weapons. You're not going to have that starting out, but it's kind of the same rules apply. The stick has a very good range, so if you just have a stick, you, you definitely want to like back up, hit, back up, hit, back up, hit. If you have like a cleaver, don't do that. If you have like a weapon that's short and hits fast, you just got to stay there and, and keep hitting. So. The, this this uh, little radar thing up on the top has rings around it. If something gets within that inner ring, he'll start running at you. But if you sneak and he's not facing you, he can be in this inner ring. If I go in front of him, he'll run at me. But I can come around from behind. And when you're sneaking and you get up close, you do triple damage with a hit. 
So that kills the guy in one hit. Okay, here comes a toxic spitter. I run to the side of him, I hit him, I turn, hit him again. That's basically how you kill these guys. Um, sometimes you'll get two or three running at you at the same time. I think I've had like six on me at the same time, and you're going to end up getting you're going to end up getting messy. Either, and you just have to go back and take a shower. But you always want to try to avoid that spit. Um, so same thing here. I'm sneaking. This road sign also is, has really good range. You, you can't craft these. You got to find them. And uh, so I could sneak up and get this guy, but then that other guy will hit me, will come after me. So these are the chests that are in the middle. Hit. They can hurt the other zombies, so you can use that to your own benefit. Um, so when they're spitting or stomping at you, see here's a B card. If that was an A card, you could use that to get to the bunker. Kind of in the middle of the, the maps, this is where you get uh, the chests. This is an orange zone, so the loot will be mediocre. Wrenches are very valuable. If you find one, you're lucky. See, that's an AI who just came out and started shooting at me. If I was kind of a newer player, he probably would have killed me. So normally I wouldn't bother with this, but... Just to show you, this is an AI. Um, I always try to stay healed up. So he usually will have weapons and armor. You can take it. That's AIs are great to kill to kind of restock on weapons and armor. So a lot of times you'll want to run away from them if you're not prepared. But if you if you are, then you definitely want to kill AI any chance you get. And then they, you know they don't have much weapons and armor in the on the green zone, but the orange zones and the red zones they, they usually have something decent to to go after. So I'm gonna just aggro this guy. So I'm gonna hit back up, hit back up, hit like that. That's the best way to to fight somebody if you have a ranged wep a ranged melee. If um if you if you have a like a machete, it doesn't have very good range. You, that's when you just you get up to somebody and you start whacking. You don't want to mess around. Oops, see, I wasn't paying attention. And I got spit on. And uh, let me see what else is there. Okay, so then there's these big guys. There's floater bloaters and toxic abominations. Uh, so these guys here, they do something special too. When you see the big circle, you just back up. And they'll whack everybody around them too, so sometimes that's an advantage. So anyways, that's basically the, the mechanics of how to play. Uh, the grass seed here, when you pick it up, you do, you'll get a plant fiber, but every once in a while, like eh, every other one pretty much, you'll also get seeds. I'm getting pretty unlucky with that. But... Come on, dude. Seeds. Okay, so there's seeds. That's how you get seeds. You plant these, and then you can get the carrot stew, and that's uh, a, something that you need to, to do right away. Start planting that stuff, and that, that heals you, takes care of your hunger, takes care of your thirst. It's always good to have that kind of stuff with you. And uh, other than that, it's it's just the bunker um, to show. I guess I'll head over there and just kind of show the basics of the bunker. I'm not going to do a whole bunker run or anything, but um, so I'm going to go over here to the bunker. The bunker, once you open it, is stays open for two days, so you have 48 hours to do do it before it resets. Uh, you'll also see on my screen the little red skull and crossbones to the left under the coin. That means that I that's something you do later on after you start raiding people. What am I doing? All right, so apparently I was distracted and I didn't hit drive. I hit. Uh, 
I, I hit run, so my bad. Now I gotta sit through an advertisement. And, uh, yeah. So the, the bunker is uh, not something you want to do right away. You really want to get some weapons and armor stacked up. Uh, I mean, there's things you can do early on in the bunker that aren't too bad that that will benefit you, but uh, it, it's, it can be very difficult here starting out. So, uh, okay. So as I recall, there are zombies here at the beginning that you gotta clear out, nothing extreme, I think. Actually, actually I don't know, I'm not sure if there were zombies here. Um, I know in Bravo Bunker there were a bunch of zombies, but you get in here, you use your A card, these things you can loot, and then over here at the terminal is where you gotta enter the code. I already have entered the code, this thing pops up, and then you can go in. When I first started playing, you, there wasn't a code yet. They didn't hadn't designed the, the first floor of the bunker yet, so <clears throat> I don't even remember what that was like. So this is the lobby level or the first floor, and you can basically loot various things in here. There's usually like one zombie here. There's a zombie in here. Inside here, there's a shower. There's nothing in here. This room. This is where you activate hard mode, and don't ever do that if you're just starting out. Um, right now it's in easy mo mode or normal mode, and it's not too bad. It is difficult for sure for somebody starting out. I mean, for me, I could clear the whole thing in an hour and not u not hardly use anything beyond what I can get in the ticket crates. I mean, it's, it's not too bad. This guy here is for hard mode, so don't worry about him. And this is for repairing weapons, which you probably also won't be doing anytime soon. Uh, you can modify weapons and kind of repair them there. Uh, so this room here, there's three zombies. And, um, and you basically come here and you get uh, green tickets. Uh, I think I have some in here. So you get these green tickets, yellow tickets, and red tickets for killing people. And you also find them in chests. And when you get enough, you can unlock these crates. And these crates are, this is the red ticket chest, and it's got the best stuff in here. This is where you're going to find the parts to build a chopper, and it's very, very hard to do. It's, it's a real pain in the ass, unless you're super lucky. But I've heard that newer players have much better luck than the older players. Uh, the way they did the programming on, on it somehow it benefits newer players. So you might get lucky and get the gas tank and the chopper fork and the wheels and stuff right away i don't know but it was a real pain for me i had to do the bunker many 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 times before i finally got it and then once you and the, the, so anyways you got to get these tickets you can open these these chests and you get a lot of a good loot through these chests and then you and the way you get it is going to these different floors here i would not recommend going to the fourth floor at all uh that's definitely not worth ever going to Second floor is a little easier than the third floor. The third floor has a little bit better tickets. Um, but in here, you, you, you kind of want to watch a video on somebody like doing a walkthrough on one of these to figure out the best way to do it. Um, or if you just want to have the, the fun of figuring it out on your own, which the fun can often be very difficult. Uh, uh, real pain in the ass fun, basically. But you just kind of proceed through and, and there's zombies and stuff to kill and uh, and uh, and you get the tickets and you come back and unlock the, the crates and these bunker floors kind of operate in a circle so once you get around you kind of work your way back to the end and, you, and you're back at the elevator um, I think there was one more thing I wanted to add and I can't remember what it was oh man I know there's something important I'm missing. Something important I was going to say. Uh, what the hell was it? So, you, yeah, you, you do the, the second and the third floors, and I forgot what it was. It was important, but I forgot. Uh, maybe it wasn't even in the bunker. So, as far as rating goes, that's not that's something you can do somewhat early on, but it, it, it takes a while to 
to, to complete the tasks. So uh, that's kind of a whole nother video right there. Um, but raiding is the, the best way to get loot. The way this game is designed is that most of the things you do cost you about two-thirds of what you get. So the rewards that you get make it worthwhile, but there's always a cost involved in getting it. So, it, you know, that way it just it kind of everything just be kind of kind of becomes an endless grind, but the hard work does pay off. It just takes a while. And I'm sure I'm missing something or something I was totally was going to talk about, but I forgot. So um, I guess I'll just have to end it here and maybe I'll put it in the comments or something when it comes to me two seconds after I hit stop. Um, yeah, I know there's something important I'm forgetting. Uh, you, you build up energy over time and, and there is a, there is a, a healer guy at, back at your base. So if you go back to your base over by your truck, after every 24 hours, the zombies come and attack your base. I, okay, that's something I didn't talk about. So every 24 hours, a, a wave of zombies come from the infected forest and attack your base. So what that means is really nothing. I mean, if you're starting out, the zombies come and they'll knock down any of the walls you've built. So don't bother building any walls for a while. Uh, they, they, the level one walls, they just knock down real easy. The level two walls, they usually have to attack twice to knock those down. Um, and then the stone walls, which are very hard to make, uh, those they, they can't knock down. They just die when they touch them. So starting out, don't bother building any walls for quite a while. Build your chest, start figuring out how you want your base designed and, and keep building your chest. But uh, don't build any walls. They'll just keep knocking them down. But after every time the zombies come, they, the healer shows up. I think that's what his name is. The healer shows up and he's down over by your truck and he'll offer you some stuff. So that guy will be standing right here. And uh, the best thing that I always get from him is the, the uh, plant fibers. That gives you full energy bar. So if you do that right, you can get a full energy bar and keep doing more stuff. These are the raiders, and and you don't really want to mess around with them right away. Um, I mean, you, you I'll, I'm going to make another video about how to do this kind of stuff, but uh, I think that's it. I know there's still one other thing, but, um, but yeah, hope, hope that helps uh, if you're starting out. Um, there's lots of stuff to do in this game and they, they keep working on it improving it and adding more stuff it just becomes more and more more and more fun and uh, eventually they'll have multiplayer hopefully so fingers crossed on that and that will be awesome so all right uh, see you later bye